16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. Is that true or false? Is that an actual question that you would ask a talent show applicant? I think it's halfway it's through the act. People just go, I'll just chop your finger off. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> I do it. What I do is I chop it off and stick like that and put the finger out my ear like that. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> or, or you could wrap it around your neck and use it to point at things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just around the corner, just over there. On the outside of the X Factor auditions, though, going down the back, <laughs> bloke with a big bag going, fingers, the fingers, <laughs> fingers, come on, you, just bend in that. Fingers, come on. <laughs> You know, it's illegal to chop your finger off, because it means you're not fit for military service. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> How did you come across that nugget of information? People tell me things and they stay in. Did you hear that, Nikki? Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> of course you weren't. Do you think it's an escalating scale of what, you, what limbs you have to lose to gain a certain degree of fame? Like Heather McCartney. She lost the whole leg. Did she made a fortune. <laughs> What's his name? Lost his eyesight. Blunkett. <laughs> These are all things Nikki learned in part one. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. True or false? False. OK, I can tell you that the answer is in fact true. Oh, all right, calm well down. Well done. <laughs> Not a lot of people, though, is it? Not, well, I mean, it's quite mental, isn't it? 16% would go, yeah, I'll have a finger off just to sing for Simon Cowell. Of course, once they've done it, they'll have to tend to f*** off like this. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? <laughs> well, they can't find my details. They give me customer reference. I give me my data, my postcode, my blood group. They can't find... The people that do the cold calling, you know, that ring you, I think that helps their love life, cos I always say, go and get f***ed. <laughs> but some people do sound more sexy on the phone. Yeah, often people phone me up and they say, can we interest you in double glazing? I go, no, but you can certainly take me out to dinner. <laughs> Have you ever had phone sex? Fantastic. Yeah. I like the fact you know when the call's over. <laughs> when your mum walks in the room. Yeah. <laughs> she can't walk in the room, she's on the phone. <laughs> You know, in America, all the sex lines start with 900. And uh, the, the area code for Western Tennessee is 901. So you must get a lot of people in Western Tennessee just getting a misstyled call. What am I wearing? Overalls. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy's right here. Earl, it's for you. <laughs> all right. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? And I think yes. We think yes. We, we think, think it's yeah, probably true. Right. Okay. I can tell you that the answer is true. Yes. Yes, 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Call centres are weird things. Yeah, I need to go from Coventry to Ipswich on Saturday. I better call someone in Bangladesh. They'll know. 16% <laughs> of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes. True or false? The fuck are you people talking about? Sixteen percent of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes, true or false? Well, it's, we think it's true. You yeah. think it's true? Oh, yeah. right. What do you think? We you think, think it's so? false. I think it's possible, but unlikely. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for that, Lee. That's really cleared I things mean, up. Really. <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Britain's favourite noise. <laughs> is it that honking noise that women's breasts make when you go out? <laughs> 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 that last one was Jordan. Is <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the biggest hit I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, it's not that. <laughs> it might be. It isn't that Britain's favourite noise. How about What was that? Pens an albatross shitting on Bill Oddy. <laughs> Albatross is a quiet where? Where? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. shut in my it's face. Go hey. on, what do you think favourite noise it... might be? Oh, wow, that is that. Nice you're noise. so close with that. Oh, it's it's glug, 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 exactly glug, the right glug. answer. Oh. <laughs> yes, Britain's favourite noise is the glug of wine as it pours into a wine glass. I think that statistic is skewed by the fact that the people most likely to stop and talk to a woman with a clipboard are winos. <laughs> Next question. 
Thing most likely to make men cry. Catching your knob and your zip. <laughs> I don't understand how anyone does that. Because normally when I do my trousers up, I've put my penis away. Yeah. <laughs> I've had the presence of mind to finish my, my urination yeah. and yeah. put the penis away and then do my trousers up. I don't yeah. shake it, then go, ah! <laughs> I forgot to put my penis away. No, the thing is, no, so it would be a miracle if I was in a toilet in the first place, if I was that bleeding stupid. <laughs> I'd probably be standing in the There's food no hall at reason. Harris, pissing on some cheese. <laughs> thing most likely to make men cry, Griff? It's a little pony with a very long mane <laughs> getting separated from its mothers and getting lost in the enchanted forest. <laughs> and then, after a lot of adventures, finally finding its way... <laughs> back! <laughs> To its mother <laughs> and the rest of the herd. Speaking for the older generation, I would have to say that it's accepting that your daughter's friends simply think of you as her dad. <laughs> so you're crying because you can't fuck your daughter's friends? <laughs> <laughs> High five, Billy. <laughs> Come on. That is perhaps the most honest answer we've ever had on this show. It's a great image, isn't it? I'm just so good up to Bill Oddie, you go, oh, you must be Joanne's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Springwatch. I've got some binoculars, I'm in a shed. <laughs> My daughter's having a sleepover. <laughs> Should be a hell of a show. <laughs> OK, yeah. thing most likely to make men cry, it's something you do in the kitchen. Oh, I Onions. Onions. Onions is exactly That's the right answer, correct. Right. Back over to you, Jenny, Jason and Lee. What? Is it this...? Is it belly drumming? Obesity business. Oh. The obesity business. Go on, tell what us more. Tell me more. Stop people being obese, the <gasps> government. Fat. Obe <laughs> oh, fat. <laughs> yeah, Louis, that's, that's another way of putting it. I'm going to join this initiative, right, because I put on a bit of weight over the last uh, Don't few even weeks, say it. Right? No, I've a get just, I've, I weighed myself this morning, right, for this, right? I guess... Just have a guess what I weigh. Just have a guess. I know this is... I want to remain friends. Here. I would rather not take part in this guessing game. I reckon... Uh, two Ronnie Corbett's. Two yeah. Ronnie Corbett's. <laughs> Sean's being polite. He meant Barker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to join the initiative and I'm going to set my target as uh, the 5th of April, right, and I'm going to get down... Apparently, my target weight is 13 and a half. That's what I should be getting down to. I'm going to go April the 5th. That's end of the tax year. And then when that bloke comes on the telly going, time is running out, time is running out, I can pretend he's talking about my life. <laughs> It's a fine idea. I can tell you, this isn't one of the most talked-about things this oh, week, right. but it has been in the news. The government has launched a healthy eating campaign. Of course, it's not PC to use the term fat. We have to use words like bubble butt, fatty boom batty, <laughs> chunky monkey wobble slobs, <laughs> or blubber naught. <laughs> if you're insulted by any of those terms, how about a salad? <laughs> they should bring back bullying. That's what they should do. <laughs> Kids, weren't they? There was one in every class. The doctor should say, I prescribe three school bullies. And then, <laughs> as soon as you go out, they just run out, you go, fatty, fatty, boom, boom, fatty, fatty, boom. <laughs> Yeah, you'd soon lose it. Sean, <laughs> Kayvan and Louis, what else have the nation been talking about? Is it the, uh, the raunchy vicar who was, uh, there was uh, banned from the clergy for 12 years for uh, being drunk in services and, uh, and swinging. swinging? Yeah, she's a swinging vicar. Not only did she do swinging, but she was also a voyeur. Because if she believes in... She believed that God would be watching. So that's a bit kinky. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, God, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think, all that praying in the daytime and swinging at the night time, imagine, must have made havoc with her knees. <laughs> because if she did the marriage, wouldn't it? She says, do you take him? Because I know I have. <laughs> oh, she only got caught when she turned up wearing the wrong dog collar. There's lots of clues for all the keys in the collection plate. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is actually... The woman that should be blamed for this, or the bloke, is actually the careers officer who told her to go into it in the first place. Cos at some point, they've sat down with her and said, what are you into? And she's gone, I really like motorbikes, getting really pissed and shagging other people's husbands. And at some point, they've gone, you thought of being a vicar? <laughs> <laughs> this swinging situation, people are, are just meeting for the first time, I imagine, or, or you know, they've, they've organised it on the internet and then they've got together. Do, do you think there's a bit of pillow talk, a little bit of, like, in the middle of it? Like, what do, what do you do for a living, then? I'm a vicar. Yeah, and I'm sure you are, yeah. <laughs> it's better than, hey, love, have a guess how much I weigh. <laughs> 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 but you can't guess, can you? <laughs> 
Shall we see whether this uh, female vicar uh, misbehaving is one of the most talked about things this week? Uh, do you watch the Wimbledon? Yeah, I watched uh, Andy Murray beat the French guy. I'm quite surprised he beat him and the French guy didn't just surrender after a couple of sets. <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's a new word, isn't it? Because it's hen mania, and now they've got andemonium. And I said, really? <laughs> it's good, andemonium. I said, really, it should be called Andy pandemonium, shouldn't it? It's a very measurable looking <laughs> man, is, well, isn't it? Yeah, as opposed to your good self, frankly. <laughs> 21 year old millionaire who looks like if they let him near the umpire's chair, he'd hang himself <laughs> off it. <laughs> it's so boring, Tennis, that the slightest thing, the crowd go mental like it's the most hilarious, mm. shocking thing they've ever seen. Federer's opponent sat next to him. Did you see that bit? The crowd reacted like he picked up a ball boy, swung him around by the ankles, and thrown him into the crowd. <laughs> Why did they throw the sweaty? It's horrible. They throw their sweaty headbands into the. It's whole, we, we're in here for about three hours, sweaty like, Imagine if, imagine if Vanessa at the end just got her knickers off and went, go oh. <laughs> The press are obsessed with knickers, aren't yeah. they? If you just were going, go oh, I can see her knickers, go oh, I can see her looking knickers, <laughs> you'd be down as a pervert, you'd get arrested. <laughs> the sun could just go to the, the tennis and go, whoa, look at her knickers, she's got red ones on, whoa. It's the equivalent of standing at the bottom of the stairs at work, just going, oh, I've seen your knickers. <laughs> for some reason, it's fine. But don't you think that those sound effects, you know when they go, Ugh! every time they serve and everything, Ugh! and if you combine that with porn, where everyone's always going, Ugh! Ugh! don't you think it just puts ordinary people under colossal pressure? Because, <laughs> like, very often you're being shagged and you don't want to make any noise, you just want to go, oh. <laughs> You don't always have to go, Ugh! Do you? Or you, go, Ugh! you just always want to go, why don't you just get him to shag you and put the tennis on in the background? <laughs> Would you be tempted to go to Glastonbury? Um, yeah, I'm going out to Glastonbury. You get killed tonight, don't you? Yeah, two hours dead. You're good. <laughs> you should go out to all the stone people at Glastonbury <laughs> and uh, <laughs> make yourself white. <laughs> make yourself all white and then just unzip the tent like that and go... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Hollyoaks is on a big screen at Glastonbury? <laughs> Them, them put in Jay Z on, is it? It's Jay Z. Is it Jay Z now? Yeah, he's in England. It's oh, Jay Z right. now. <laughs> You're over here, you play virus. It's Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs>
Alien going, mm, we must see Shrewsbury Town Hall, we must. <laughs> I don't get it. One of them described it as a cylindrical object with things protruding out the side, so that's just a plane. <laughs> My problem with unidentified flying objects is if they identify it, then it's just a flying object. And if at any point it lands, it's just an object. <laughs> and then you've just seen an O. <laughs> Let's see if soldiers spotting UFOs is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Speaking in at number five. This is the story that soldiers spotted UFOs in Market Drayton. The incident is set to be made into a movie entitled The Goose That Flew Over Market Drayton. <laughs> Would you work for Naomi Campbell? She's got 200 hours community service because she went mental on a plane, didn't she? She has, and it's not the first time she's had run-ins with the law. Yeah, she's done community service before, didn't she, in New York? Yeah. Because she hit her assistant with a blackberry. And when you first read it, <laughs> you go, that's not that bad, isn't it? <laughs> a pumpkin, I can understand. <laughs> but she just got a pumpkin and put it on the head like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look a bit like you, actually, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> For our Halloween special on this show, I just light a candle in my mouth. <laughs> you just blow it, his eyes go out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she went mental on the plane, didn't she? She, she went absolutely went, ballistic. Well, it was Terminal 5, I believe, had lost yeah. her back. The first thing she said was, she, it's because I'm black and famous. And I think you'll find that BA are an equal opportunities bag loser. <laughs> <laughs> don't lose anyone's bags. <laughs> Doesn't care whether you're prince or pauper. <laughs> What do you think of her, Vanessa? Do you like her? She's not an endearing person. If I were to work for her, I know the role I'd like to fulfil, actually. I wouldn't mind being her Brazilian waxer and pouring molten wax all over her pudenda. I think that would be a nice <laughs> job. Well, same here, but for very different reasons. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever had a hissy fit? Like a proper showbiz hissy fit? Did no, you... I'm a very calm and relaxed person, Jimmy. You know that. I take everything in my stride. Yeah. Don't f interrupt. <laughs> Kate Moss, she never does anything like this. You see a picture of her pretty much every day but you never hear her voice, do you? The reason Kate Moss doesn't speak is she's very beautiful, but actually she talks like this. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kate Moss. I'm very excited about my new Top Shop raise. <laughs> I've designed all the shows myself! <laughs> you have never been so sexy. Yes. Worst thing to happen at a wedding. Is it saving your brother's life, but then getting run over in a process and then dying <laughs> in OB's arms? Because <laughs> you died at a That's wedding. That's exactly what happens, yeah. So, so you've been written out of this thing? Is that what's happened? What do they say? No, they're keeping him in after he's died, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, play, he's playing a coffee table for the next six years. <laughs> I am going back, though. I'm going back to direct it. Do that... they direct Hollyoaks? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought it was just done with CCTV cameras. <laughs> what would make you cry at a wedding? Is it when the first song they play is I still haven't found what I'm looking for? <laughs> I reckon if the bride gets taken off by an eagle... Uh, ah, <laughs> ah, and then the church is getting smaller and smaller... Ah, ah, and then... Ah. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a clue. It would make the bride cry. The groom was set with a cheap bridesmaid. Correct. That's oh. the right answer. There we go. Oh. Yes, the worst thing that can happen at a wedding is the groom goes off with a bridesmaid. Of course, the biggest wedding of the year was Wayne and Colleen's. Colleen warned the stag party not to play any pranks on Wayne that would ruin the wedding photos. I'm afraid to say, Colleen, that ship has sailed. <laughs> well, the bumblebee crisis. What now? What? The bumblebee... <laughs> What are you talking about? It's... <laughs> what a bumblebee crisis? You don't know. No. In the paper when it says BB crisis, you know that's Big Brother, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Female bumblebees, which apparently are the, are the zealous, hard-working sex, are turning into fat, lazy males. Um, this is a crisis because although bees don't, bumblebees don't make honey, they do a lot of bumbling. And um, bumbling levels have reached a record low, and it is a, a real problem. <laughs> so what you're saying is there's a lot of lady bees turning into lady boys. Exactly. <laughs> so bumblebees, you're saying, don't make honey? No. Right, no. they just bumble around. They just bumble, and neither do they sting. What do they do? Little fat, lazy <laughs> shits. <laughs> <laughs> Am I dreaming, or is Richard Maynard talking about bees? <laughs> I can check if that's in the top five. I don't think it probably is. Well, I think people have got to be talking about the uh, shock horror news that Coldplay have been knocked off the number one spot by... Jack Shearer. <laughs> Crazy Frog. 
Uh, That's more annoying than the crazy frog. <laughs> You don't have to pixelate her genitals. So. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Martin has said he wants to catch him and eat his legs. But he's, he's never going to do it. In the video, there's some guy in a rocket bike chasing him. He can't do it. 7% of UK kids don't know what. <laughs> the correct way to prepare crack. If they eat another chocolate biscuit, they'll turn into a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> um, it, is, it is about um, food. What a carrot is. Very close. Yeah. Uh, what a carrot isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give you this one. It's 7% of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. Wow. What? In front of me. 7% of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. Cover it in breadcrumbs and deep fry it. They'll get the hang of it. <laughs> To be fair, most kids get all the orangey goodness they need from Bacardi Breezes. <laughs> Sean Steen, uh, this is from a study by Leicester University from March this year. On average, policemen spend two minutes per day what? Playing with their Nino. <laughs> um, arguing over who's going to be bad cop. <laughs> spend two minutes per day tampering with evidence. <laughs> you know, just for old times sake. <laughs> Is it boiling a really soft egg? <laughs> no, the answer is, in fact, on average, policemen spend two minutes per day taking statements. Dave, Simon and uh, Lee, this is from the Department of Health survey from last December. Southerners are five times more likely to what than Northerners? Support Manchester United. <laughs> Celebrate Pim's o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Book a flight from Gatwick. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's to do with an emergency. Five times more likely to not have an emergency. <laughs> it wasn't that much of a clue. Call an ambulance. You're absolutely right. It is dial 999. Yeah. <laughs> My neighbour had a heart attack, right, fell on his hamster, and the RSPCA got there before the ambulance. <laughs> Sean's team, you're next. Um, this is according to a survey by the Ramblers Association from this March. 69% of people think that encountering what would spoil their enjoyment of a country walk? Talking sheep. <laughs> Especially a really dull one. <laughs> if a sheep could talk, it'd be quite boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, he's just been standing here all day. Bloody boring. <laughs> over there yesterday. Great. <laughs> About to the size of a horse. <laughs> That sounded really rude, the way you said it. <laughs> oh, she had a badger the size of a horse. I keep forgetting Richard Maley's there, and it's like a little surprise every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what would spoil a country walk? Come on, just think about it logically. A bull. The road. Oh, electric, electric pylon. Yeah, you're along no. the right. Motorway. Cars. Well, you're absolutely right. I'll Cars. give you that. It's vehicles. Cars. What? what? <laughs> Dave, um, your team, uh, next one's from the British Attitude Survey, December 2004. By the year 2015, half the world's population will what? Have been evicted from the Big Brother house. <laughs> <laughs> will have had a go on Titmus. <laughs> I've read the Da Vinci Code. Reading the Da Vinci Code is kind of along the same lines. Well, they would be able to read the Da Vinci Code. Speaking English. You're absolutely right. Sean, yours is the next one from a survey by Surrey University, featured in the Daily Mail in March. 17% of British women are kept awake each night by what? 17% of British men. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Maidley. <laughs> yeah, they're there tossing and yeah. turning. Yeah. <laughs> is it ecstasy? <laughs> I think it's a gentle but insistent prodding in their lower backs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's quite an obvious one. The children. Is it snoring? You are absolutely 100% oh. right. 17% of British women are kept awake by their partner snoring. If your partner does snore, one way you can deal with it is to gently roll them over. Do it three times, they're out the bed, problem solved. <laughs> Most disappointing holiday destination? Leatherhead. <laughs> Costa Delamitri. Dusseldorf. 
It's well, not. Always say, you know, EasyJet have those flights on um, Ryanair to Dusseldorf. And you think, why would you want to go? And if you say, I'm taking you on a romantic weekend, where to? Dusseldorf. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's anywhere where England's Barmy Army are when, when you get there. Spain, especially, because I don't know if you've been there when there's been a football match on, and they're all on, on the streets going, Champion is Champion. And all the Spanish are going, that's mushrooms. <laughs> OK, come on, most disappointing, it's between uh, Spain and France. Andorra is between Spain and France. Andorra is the Never. correct answer. <laughs> the most disappointing holiday destination. This is from a That's Life magazine survey from last year. Most frequently told lie. Simon. It's been great to have you on the show. <laughs> I must have downloaded it by accident. <laughs> it could be you. <laughs> or is it, I won't come on your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Most frequently told. <laughs> it's more obvious than that. It's, so, it's something that is often said by men to, uh, to women. Like a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's something like... You know you don't you... look fat in that. Yeah. You are exactly yeah. right. The yeah. most frequently told lies you yeah. don't look fat in that. Well done, that's good. Good. Mm. If you look, we've got the top ten here. It's of course you don't look fat, it's number one. These were only ten pounds. <laughs> Second most the bus was late, I've got a headache, I've only had one drink, that dress looks good on you. Uh, the check's in the post, you look ten years younger, you're wonderful in bed, and I love you. I think over the course of one weekend I've used all of those. <laughs> This is from a poll by Yours magazine from last year. Uh, hardest thing to open? A spearmint rhino in Kabul. <laughs> I think there's a market for it, I'll be honest. Yep. You go in there, pay your money, oh, she's got beautiful eyes. <laughs> is it the uh, front door when you need a poo? <laughs> <laughs> I, shall, I, I shall tell you, the, the, uh, surprisingly, the most difficult thing to open is not a West End musical, it is, in fact, bleach bottles. But considering the fact that kids can't get into an orange, why are we worrying? <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson, of course, he looks a lot older than he is. Incredibly, he's gone from 0 to 60 in 45 years. <laughs> what poll do you think he might have appeared on? Ugliest men in the world you wouldn't shag even if they were left on a desert island with you. Ah! <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> Can you imagine him in bed? <laughs> Somebody you'd most like to hit with a cricket bat. <laughs> I say cricket bat, that's my weapon of choice. Pick your own weapon, isn't it? Obviously. <laughs> really. I think it might be just something with uh, Jeremy Clarkson is known, he's got a very long Biffins Bridge, hasn't he? What's Beg that? Beg your pardon. What's that? Biffins Bridge. <laughs> Stand up. Right. All right, because you've got quite a long one. You have your trousers I've up. I've got quite a long one. one. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. He's just pulled his trousers yeah. Top of your trousers. Yeah. Right, then get your other finger and go down. Like that. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Oh. Keep going, keep going. Now, back there, there, there. That's yeah. your Biffins Bridge. Now, take your hand away. That's how long your Biffins Bridge What's is. It? Why is it called a Biffins Bridge? It's not bridge? your Biffins Bridge. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> that was Victoria Aitken with her attempt at a rap career to illustrate posh people. So, Jeremy Clarkson and posh people, what poll do you think they might have appeared on? Is it people who know how to use a B day? <laughs> No, my mum, a couple of years ago, my mum got a new bathroom in and she said to me, Dad, I've just paid £100 extra for one of them things that you wash your bottom with. And he said, you paid £100 for a flannel. <laughs> <laughs> Is it people you never get tired of kicking? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about posh people, I hate it when they laugh. It's horribly <laughs> laugh. Do laughing. an imitation. Ha, 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 Do common people laughing, then? Go on, I'll try and make you laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it people that look or sound like Camilla Parker Bowles? <laughs> he looks a bit like Camilla, doesn't he? He's got that sort of robustness. No, I think... I find her attractive. Camilla Parker Bowles, you find her attractive in what way? I'm thinking of Roddle. <laughs> <laughs> She's nice, actually. Have you met her? Yes, I have. I, I, I met Prince Charles once, he, and, and he asked me, what does one do, and I explained the show, and he said, what sort of people do you have on the show? And I would say, I said, oh, you know, the husband, the wife, and the mi and the and the and the, mis and the mistress. 
Let's have a look at the next person. So posh people, Jeremy Clarkson and Manchester United. What pole might they have appeared on? Man United players are always getting done for speeding. Yeah. Clarkson's always going very fast. Unfortunately, not in the same direction forever. You know, <laughs> tend to come back. Actually, talking to Man United players and speeding, do you remember when David Beckham got done for speeding? He came out with the greatest excuse I've ever heard. He said, uh, they asked him why he, was, why he was speeding, and he said, I was being followed by a photographer. Like, no, Dave, they're called speed cameras. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it to do with phone companies? What do you mean by phone companies? Well, Jeremy Clarkson does something for BT, and Man United do Vodafone. And? And not a People. goddamn clue about <laughs> the last one. And that is why you're wrong. <laughs> uh, Elton John. There's nothing to go with, to go with him, is there? <laughs> we could do a couple of bumming jokes, I suppose. That's <laughs> <laughs> the good side. Well, Cut that's it why out. I'm not doing it. That's why I'm Cut not doing it. it. I'm not doing it. His level of humour is so desperate. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't going to show whether he eat kangaroo balls. <laughs> <laughs> he actually, actually, actually. To be fair to Patrick, what he said was, I said, Elton, where, you know, where's the comedy in, in Elton? And he said, we could do that. He didn't say he was going to, or he would like to. He wouldn't get any pleasure. He wouldn't get any pleasure out of that, would you? I'm <laughs> saying, fuck all. <laughs> do you know what? People actually had the gall to comment about my chat show. Have a look at this, would you? <laughs> yeah, but luckily, we edit this. 93% <laughs> uh, of people who what are overweight? Watch Trisha. <laughs> How long have you been watching the show? Oh, I've been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm a massive... I'll tell you, I do every day, me. I, that's my favourite. Pregnant with twins, only shared my brother's towel. That was my favourite. 65% of circus performers are what? I think 65% of circus performers are covered in pie. <laughs> <laughs> and wearing the wrong shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a circus in, uh, in East London and, uh, about two years ago. It's quite funny. And one of the clowns forgot to turn his mobile off. <laughs> Uh, and it went off. It took him ages to find it because they've got those massive pockets. <laughs> he reached around. And the thing is, the tune on his mobile was. And he's reaching out and he got his mobile vote, switched it off. And the amazing thing was the way the other clowns re reacted. They went mental at him. Right? They started pouring water down his trousers. <laughs> they hit him with a ladder. <laughs> they really overreacted. Why they put a barrel over him and pushed him over? <laughs> Total overreaction. <laughs> 65% of circus performers are not to be trusted. <laughs> it's like bad actually at circus ones. Yeah, and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I've got a little puppet. Would you tell him? <laughs> so you look more like a puppet, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you look a bit like a ventriloquist dummy, don't you? It's the hair, really, that gives it away. <laughs> it's so neat and tidy, it's unnatural. So 65% of circus performers are my hair looks like a dummy. <laughs> That's you get. Is it animals? Oh, that, 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 that was a no, joke. That is a serious. good suggestion. I'm sorry, I'm hey, giving you credit there. Sister! That is a good suggestion! <laughs> <laughs> Whose diary would you most like to read? Who got the most votes? George Bush's would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Invaded Iraq. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Have an ice cream. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus's would be good because he, he like he died on the Friday, he rose on the Sunday, mm. right? But it was like because it was Easter, it was a bank holiday weekend. No, I <laughs> I've had some bank holiday weekends where I've woke up in a cave and I've not claimed to be. You know, <laughs> anything happened? I've just. I'm sorry, it would be great to get hold of it the week before the Last Supper, just see if he had his suspicions. You know. <laughs> Tuesday went fishing. Wednesday made a blind man see. Took Mary up the Casbah. <laughs> Judas throwing his money about. <laughs> I'd like to read the White Lion's diary in uh, Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> <laughs> got up, ate a nutter. <laughs> <laughs> Which one got eaten? Hey? Was it Siegfried or Roy? But he didn't get eaten, did he? Got bit. When it happened, the majority of people in the world went, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know one bloke who went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> who would be the best guest on Trisha? <laughs> Who's the fattest? <laughs> <laughs> so what happens on Trisha? You've never seen the show? So no. before, I've yeah. seen a, a bit of it, mm. but I was cycling past the shop at the time. It was just gone. <laughs> it's a chat show where people talk about their problems, and while we're at it, yeah. what is it that you do? Well, <laughs> I can't believe there's a row and Janet isn't involved. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
<laughs> where you go wrong with Trisha is... <laughs> Sorry. When it, when it comes on, you put, like, across the bottom what the programme's all about. Now, if it's not my daughter wants to be a stripper, it gets flicked off. <laughs> <laughs> Who would be the best guest on Trisha? What do you think, Sean? Charlotte Church. Oh. What, why yeah. is that? Just read the papers, my friend. It's all her. So you've gone for Charlotte Church? Yeah. Apparently, okay. Yep. Who are you going to go for? Jesus. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I think... never knew my father. <laughs>